From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good Friday morning. It is 5.30. Welcome to Montana This Morning. I am Victoria Hill, and Ed is here with us, filling in for Miller once again. Miller's uh, book ending the holiday weekend, the Halloween <laughs> holiday weekend, with some extra days off. It's That's good for right. him. Yeah, I, I don't, that's a good way to do it, isn't I, it? I want to know what he's going to be for Halloween. I mean, he wouldn't tell us yesterday. He's like, well, yeah, yeah he was just very like, oh, I don't know. So he has a plan. He he's does. just not sharing it. <laughs> yes. I think I'm going to have to go creep by his house later and kind of get an idea <laughs> of what's going on in the Robson household. All right. Well, hopefully he shares some pictures when he comes back. He's a big picture guy. He sure. is a picture guy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start off with a picture of what's going on this morning with the uh, Stockman Bank weather cam. 55 for a very mild start with a southwest wind at 17 miles per hour. And uh, temperatures regionally are holding up pretty well. I mean, it's been a mild overnight 40s and 50s to get the day started. And that would be pretty close to typical temperatures by the afternoon for this time of the year. So we've got a nice warm up in store by later in the day, but we also have some wind Livingston area right now. Gusts over 50 miles per hour. Same thing, uh, uh, stronger winds around Great Falls to the north. Not a big surprise there with lighter winds across the eastern plains. Regionally, the temperatures are going to be warming up from where we are now, 50s, even 60s. How about 60 in Great Falls and Helena to get the day started? Those showers over in around Missoula, Kalispell, an indication of what's coming next. Cooler air and wetter air, at least briefly. Temperatures today will move up into the 60s. We'll see some low 70s to the east of Billings. All of this is going to start to shift, and there's going to be a big change in the weather pattern starting overnight and heading into tomorrow. I'll take a closer look at that in a few minutes, Victoria. All right, we begin this morning with some peace of mind for Hardin School District parents. The social media threats that may have been targeting Hardin Public Schools were not legitimate. Superintendent Chad Johnson says two threats were made, one on Sunday and another on Wednesday. He said he can't share any more information in lo as law enforcement continues to investigate. There was no school on Monday after Sunday's threat. When students returned on Tuesday, there were heightened security measures, including metal detecting wands, thorough bag checks, and gunpowder detecting dogs. In court news, a Billings man is suing the Albertsons grocery chain after an employee at a Missoula store attacked and stabbed him. Dylan Turner was shopping with his wife back in July when police say employee Shane Davis targeted Dylan in an erratic and aggressive attack. Turner suffered a deep gash on his arm that he says put him out of work. Davis is currently in jail in Missoula. The lawsuit accuses Albertsons of negligent hiring and supervision of Davis. At the time of his hiring, he had several charges, including breaking into a Missoula home and exposing himself to a child. Albertsons did not respond to our requests for comment. The flu has been discovered in Montana for the first time in a year and a half. A Flathead County child tested positive for influenza this week. No one in Montana has done that since April of 2020. Nationwide, there are just over 120 flu cases recorded so far this year. That's according to the CDC. Flu season typically starts in October and peaks in December or January. Now we go to the courtroom where the man accused of shooting and killing a Kalispell gym employee over a membership is pleading not guilty. Jonathan Shaw is facing one count of deliberate homicide and one count of attempted deliberate homicide. On the day of the shooting, gym employees told officers they went to talk with Shaw, who was living in the parking lot. During the conversation, the victim, Matthew Hurley, told Shaw he would not receive a full refund on his gym membership. Shaw stated, well, you're going to die and started shooting at Hurley. A bystander saw this going down and used his own weapon to shoot at Shaw, hitting him in the leg. Hurley died at the scene. A jury trial is set for April 18th. President Joe Biden and the First Lady are in Italy today for an audience with, the po with Pope Francis at the Vatican. The president traveled to Europe to attend this weekend's G20 Leaders Summit in Rome. Next week, he's set to deliver an address at a UN climate conference in Scotland. He had hoped to be able to tout his spending bill, which is heavy on green energy policies during his speech, but was unable to convince Congress to vote on it yesterday. Big oil executives testified virtually before the U.S. House about climate change yesterday. Democrats didn't like the answers the oil reps gave about their role in contributing to the problem and could issue subpoenas to multiple energy companies. CBS's Skylar Henry has more.
Anything, I'm just asking an open question. It's like not a gotcha question. Democrats on Capitol Hill wanted clear testimony from oil executives of ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP America, and Shell. For far too long, big oil has escaped accountability for its central role in bringing our planet to the brink of a climate catastrophe. That ends today. But lawmakers said they didn't get the answers they wanted much like at the big tobacco legislative hearing in the 90s. I was hoping that that you would not be like the tobacco industry was and lie about this. Oil execs did talk freely about climate change and its effects. As early as 1991, our annual reports discussed concerns about climate change. ExxonMobil has long recognized that climate change is real and poses serious risks. Did we join some of these shadow groups uh, to work against? Uh, some of the early efforts, yes. The hearing follows the release of a video in June that shows former Exxon senior lobbyist Keith McCoy speaking about the company's efforts to fight climate science. But the CEOs of ExxonMobil and Chevron both say their companies have not engaged in disinformation campaigns. Any suggestion that Chevron is engaged in an effort to spread disinformation and mislead the public on these complex issues is simply wrong. It is absolutely disgusting. Republicans criticize Democrats' questions and the validity of the hearing. The purpose of this hearing is clear, to deliver partisan theater for primetime news. Each m M&M represents about $50 million in spending. California Democrat Katie Porter used props to try to make her point about the oil company's wasteful actions as executives pledge to do more to combat climate change. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. McCoy was fired from ExxonMobil after the video was released by the environmental group Greenpeace UK. President Biden's vaccine mandate for federal workers faces a new legal challenge. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis filed a lawsuit that accuses the president of overstepping his legal authority. President Biden announced the mandate last month, which requires federal workers and contractors to be vaccinated by December 8th. There's no testing option instead of the vaccination. The mandate also laid the groundwork for a rule that requires vaccine vaccinations or testing at businesses with at least 100 employees. The Texas abortion law will take center stage in front of the Supreme Court on Monday. Justices will hear oral arguments on Monday by the Justice Department and Texas abortion providers. Both parties argue the ban is unconstitutional based on previous Supreme Court cases that prohibit states from banning abortions before a fetus is viable. The Texas law bans abortions once cardiac activity is detected, which happens at about six weeks. The law will remain in place during the legal battle. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is facing a criminal charge for a misdemeanor sex crime. He's charged with forcibly touching a woman in the governor's executive mansion last year. If convicted, Cuomo faces up to a year in prison and three years of probation. Cuomo resigned under fire amid complaints of sexual harassment and unwanted touching from former staffers. He has denied all of the allegations. The Biden administration is considering paying the families of migrants who were separated at the border. Separated migrant parents and children will be offered around $450,000 per person. Roughly 5,500 children were separated from their families under former President Donald Trump's zero tolerance policy. The talks are a part of negotiations between the Justice Department and lawyers representing the separated families. Families of the victims and survivors of the 2015 shooting at a church in Charleston in South Carolina have reached an $88 million settlement with the Justice Department. It settles multiple lawsuits over errors made during a background check that allowed shooter Dylan Roof to buy the gun he used to kill nine people. New York City is among several cities set to enforce coronavirus vaccine mandates for municipal workers. The Big Apple is bracing for a possible shortage of police officers, firefighters, and other essential workers beginning later today. CBS's Laura Podesta has the latest. Hundreds of New York City firefighters gathered outside Mayor Bill de Blasio's home to protest his new rule that they all must be vaccinated by 5 p.m. today or go on unpaid leave. Union officials rallied the crowd. We are anti-mandate. We are pro-choice. The firefighters union says as many as 20 percent of fire companies could close and the ambulance fleet would be impacted as well if the mayor does not budge on his mandate. The city's police force could also be affected. Roughly a quarter of officers still haven't gotten the shot. 
De Blasio insists he has a contingency plan to help prevent response time delays. The bottom line is, can we do the things we need to do, first of all, to keep this city safe for the long run? Well, that means getting people vaccinated. Yes, we can do that. Six of the country's 10 largest cities have or are planning a vaccine mandate for municipal workers. In Los Angeles, San Diego, and here in New York City, there is no testing alternative. Los Angeles County Sheriff Alex Villanueva made it clear yesterday his opposition to the vaccine mandate for Sheriff's Department employees. He said he doesn't plan to enforce it. A new study by the Kaiser Family Foundation found more than a third of unvaccinated workers say they would leave their job if their employer required them to get a vaccine or get tested weekly. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Earlier this week, a judge refused the New York City Police Union's request for a temporary restraining order on the mandate, but she ordered city officials into her courtroom next month to explain why the requirement shouldn't be reversed. If the mandate is deemed illegal, workers put on leave will be given back pay. Before the first big snowfall of the season, Billings Clinic is promoting heart health with help from local hardware stores. Every snow shovel and ACE hardware locations across the region will be equipped with a sticker pointing out the signs of a heart attack. Doctors say shoveling snow can put a big strain on the heart, especially in people who are otherwise sedentary. Each year, nearly 12,000 people head out to shovel snow and end up in the emergency department. So remember, too much exertion too quickly can trigger a heart attack, especially especially in the cold. Any symptoms that are new or worsening, so like shortness of breath, chest discomfort, sometimes it's heaviness or pressure rather than pain. Sometimes it's back discomfort or pain in the jaw, shoulders, or neck. Things like exertional nausea or dizziness would also be concerning symptoms. Doctors say if you have heart problems or find yourself tiring easily, switch to a smaller shovel, take frequent breaks, and stay hydrated. Thank you so much for starting your day with us here on Montana This Morning.